Welcome to Tea, Toast, and Theology. <clears throat> so I apologize. My sermons uh, uh, used to be more in sync between 8 and 10. And, um, and then I am reaching a point more and more so uh, where we will talk fully after the worship service about this whole thing called Holy Spirit and how it leads. But I do want to share what happened at the 8 o'clock. Uh, what happened at the 8 o'clock was uh, someone got up and read the Old Testament reading. And then someone got up and read the uh, psalm. And then someone got up and read the Old Testament reading again. <laughs> And um, yes, Jane, you got it. We all need to hear that reading more than once. We all need to hear that reading more than once. And the person who read it was, you know, feeling like, oh, my God, what did I do? Because, you know, this person realized, like, in the middle of it, like, oh, my God. And thankfully, that reading was continued. And so what I said at that point was um, that, you know, we think that the Holy Spirit is at work when the outcome is exactly the way we want it to be. Right? Very well structured. This is how it is to be done. This is how it's going. Wonderful. Holy Spirit was here. And sometimes... Holy Spirit is exactly where we didn't think we're going to go. And we end up there and we go, what? That cannot be it. And there is a purpose because God wants us to hear that over and over again. You see, I grew up um, in, a, in a tradition of the Psalms, okay? Uh, the hymnody that I grew up with was uh, nothing like what you have here in these traditional services or on Saturdays. So, you know, people, when people begin to worry about me, whether I like this kind of music or that kind of music, let me assure you, I didn't grow up with either one of them. Okay? So I have no preference for either. I love actually all of that, but I don't have because I love music. So I love good music when I hear it. If I hear really good classical music, I love it. If I hear, like I heard last night, you know, I, I, said, to, uh, I said to Jen and Craig, I felt like I was in, like, Alabama or Mississippi last night. I mean, it was hopping, right? It was really, really, you know, when this morning you said, praise the Lord, I was like, oh, we're back in Alabama. Okay. <laughs> Right? Uh, but but it, was, it was really, good music is good music. doesn't matter what kind of genre it is. Right? But I grew up with, with the Psalms as the music. Right? And Psalms are powerful. Really, really powerful. Because they come from deep down. The yearning comes from deep down. The expression of faith comes from deep down. So that was the hymnody I came. And so then I come here to the U.S. and I'm, in, and I'm finding myself in this wonderful, like, uh, a university. A university whose history is very interesting. You, know, you all probably know the history of Duke University, right? right? The, guy, the guy wanted to buy Princeton because Princeton was going broke. Right? So he wanted to go and he, he said, okay, I'll buy Princeton as long as you name it Duke. <laughs> right? And Princeton said, oh, no, we are the Ivy League. We are, we're not going to do that. Right? And, and he said, fine. Then I'll build a university named Duke that will look exactly like Princeton. So if you look at the buildings of Duke and the buildings of Princeton, they are a replica of each other. Okay? Because he said, fine, I'll build my own. Right? And he named it Duke. So you go, you go to a university like this with beautiful, you know, the center of that university is the chapel. Right? It is, it is a beautiful setting to be in. 
And there, uh, I was blessed to be a student of this Old Testament professor who, who uh, exposed to me the bias we have in Christian faith. Because not only would he make us read the whole, in his introductory to uh, Old Testament, he made us read the whole Old Testament as it should be the case from the first verse and to the last verse, he quizzed us every week on it, right? A lot of people get to seminary never ever actually reading. I mean, they read great books, but never the greatest book cover to cover, right? Right? That happens, right? They read all kinds of in, uh, commentaries and things like that, but never the greatest book, right? Uh, in, in that kind of detail. But he was very, very particular, making us read through it and taking, you know, having take quizzes on it. And, you know, he would come in and start the class with the reading from the Old Testament somewhere, you know, whatever he would pick. And then he would say, please rise for the reading of the Old Testament. And, you know, the first time we got up, the like professor is saying, so you just get up, right? And then he told us why he did it. Because we seem to have developed this bias. And I know a lot of my colleagues think that they haven't preached unless they have preached on the gospel reading. They think that the gospel is, the gospel message starts with the first verse of the gospel of Matthew, ends with the gospel of John. They don't realize that the first verse of Come on, Genesis till the last verse of, of Revelation. And then everything that, is, that God is doing, the acts of God in our lives is a gospel. For it speaks to the glory of God. Right? So, Here's the thing. Pope Pius XI, in 19, I think, 20s, 25, let's say, he looked at the world, <clears throat> devastated from a world war, and said, that's it. He concluded that the reason why the, war, why the world had gone into deep chaos was because the world had lost the sense of Christ the King. And that is when this whole Sunday that we celebrate today got instituted. It was a reminder how the world can go into chaos when Christ is not recognized as the King. So why... Should Christ be recognized as the king? Why? Why is that important? So before I answer that, in my preparation for today, I was reading this commentary and this guy said, well, you know, we are Americans. Kingdom makes no sense to us. The word king takes our minds to the or whatever, right? Right? There are some other people who live in that palace, by the way, who wear pointy hats too. <laughs> right? It's sad. That's true. That's where our mind goes. Right? And he's, but we are a democratic nation. Now hold that thought. We are a democratic nation. Okay? And I want you to hold that thought because to listen to what's going on in Ezekiel. What's really important is the distinction between the way the story unfolds there and the way the story unfolds in what we call the gospel. Right? Because in this story that Jesus is telling, 
there is a particular scene that's happening. And I know there are certain parts of the Christian tradition that love that story. There are two, there are two passages in the Bible that they remember. I actually, when I was very young, in my early 20s, uh, right out of uh, uh, the divinity school, uh, I was uh, uh, given the honor to attend a conference. And I was amongst uh, all these wonderful theologians from Asia, okay? And all very, very wonderful, justice-loving people. And, uh, and there are two passages from the Bible that they all know about and talk about. You know, two passages are, one is that one that the other one is, it's from Luke, by the way. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has come to, yeah, and declare the year of Jubilee, right? And, 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 and it goes on there, right? So I, I quoted I, co I gave the reference for, for that. And everybody like started looking at each other like, what is that passage? And I was like, guys, this is the one that you love most. Come on, at least remember the reference for this one. But here's the point. We all love that because we, we think it is all about being that good person, such a good person that they didn't even realize that they were so good. Right? And we also want a God that is not, and here's the rub, we also want a God who's not judgmental. Right? And guess what? That whole story is about judgment. <laughs> that whole story is about judgment. That whole story is about the Son of Man is there and there is a judgment happening. And we love to talk about eternal life, but we never focus on eternal punishment. And the whole idea of that story is to learn from it and to move towards acts that lead to eternal life so that we don't have to face eternal punishment. Because that would be horrible. That is the whole idea of that story, right? But here's the thing, here's the problem with that story. And last night, again, another Saturday night, we were having this conversation. It was slightly different. But we were having this conversation, and Julie, she, she nailed it, right? And I said, what's the problem with that story? And the problem with that story is that the separation is between the sheep and the Goats, you see, that's the problem. You know why that problem fits really nicely into our preconceived notion. You know how? Because of all the sermons we have heard about how sheep are such wonderful animals, they'll just go and do what you want them to do. They'll just walk straight lines, go wherever, give, go wherever the border collie leads them, right? And goats, oh my God. They hop around everywhere. They, are, they go, get on these trees and they are destructive. I don't, know, I don't know how many of you have heard these sermons, but I have. Okay, about the goat and the sheep and how, how that is the problem, you know, the goat is going everywhere, you know, untethered and, and then you have sheep and then uh, we should be like the sheep. Are you beginning to see the problem? No, 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 no. The problem is that the goats are different from the sheep. That from day one, a sheep is a sheep and a goat is a goat. <laughs> and we have decided and made the judgment from the very beginning that goat is different from a sheep. You see, that is the problem. That is the problem. That we have 
already made the decision. Talk about judgment. We have already made the decision that a goat is a goat and a sheep is a sheep and goats will function in the way the goats will function and sheep will function. function. That is something even before we go into the story, we have already made our decision. Because the goat are those people. Those people. The naughty ones. Not the good old sheep. Like us. Right? We've already made the decision. The Old Testament reading is what makes it really hard. Because the Old Testament story says, it's not the goats and the sheep. Guess what? It's the sheep and the, and the sheep. It's the sheep and the sheep that God is going to do two things. First, God is going to bring them all together because the context there is exile, right? So, so, so God is bringing all these sheep together back into one, to be that one community under the kingship of, right? But here's the thing, that thought that I had asked you to hold on to, are you still holding on to? Which one was it? Yes, now is the time to let because here, this, the whole point of democracy is versus yeah. theocracy or kingship is yep. who makes the decision? The king. In democracy, who makes the decision? Right. And what? is democracy considered better than kingship? Yeah, because the assumption is that when we all are making decisions, we will make it for the good of all. Right? That is the assumption, that when we will make the decision, we will make it for the good of all, whereas the king will only think of the king's palaces and all the other riches, right? So the decision will be from that perspective. Oh, any bread to eat? Why don't you eat some cake? You see, the perspective is different, but the people who are, are at the same level are part of the same community, the same Demography, right? They will make a good decision because they will care for each other. Now, what would you do when the same people are doing this to each other? It is a descriptive language there in the Old Testament. It's like they like to do this. And it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting imagery. These fat sheep are headbutting and driving these sheep away. Away from food and water. That makes some, some lean and some fat. You know, in America, we don't like to talk about classism. Because at one level, it is true. In America, you can, unlike most nations in the world, you can actually move through the classes, no problem. It is true. Right? And yet, we are not a society free of classes. Right? There is greater mobility. 
But that doesn't mean that we don't have them. Right? Now, in the kingdom of God, the idea is that there will be no such classism. There will be no such inequality. Why? Because every sheep will not do this. They will actually make sure that everyone has equal food to eat. So no one ends up leaner and no one ends up fat. Whenever there is a fat sheep, it is at the cost of someone who is a lean sheep. That is the challenge in keeping it in equilibrium. And the, that is being the Old Testament and the gospel is that things go like this when we don't have Christ as the king. That is what Pope saw happening. And he was right. You can look at our society today. Now, here's the thing. Absolutely important. It is absolutely important to make sure that everyone is getting equal food and water and everything else. Right? It's absolutely important. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Okay? But it's also important to focus on those words where it says, the Lord says about the fatted sheep, I will feed them with justice. I will feed them with justice. My friends, I grew up from, I think, age 11 to till I was 17 or so. I grew up with a poster that was on the wall as I would wake up. The first thing I saw was that poster. And that poster was of Bishop Helder Camera. Bishop Helder Camera is a Roman Catholic, was a Roman Catholic Latin America. And his famous saying, his quote was, and this is me growing up. I mean, you, you should feel sorry for me at this point. So me up with this, this quote, Day I would wake up to it, and it would, and it said, in the, "When I give food to the poor, they call me a saint. When I give food, call me a saint. But when I ask why the poor have no food." They call me a communist. Yes, we need to do the things that have been doing, I feel, of others and that is uh, I, that's why I love Saturday nights so much because everyone walks in there with some food to offer and there are people there trust me Robin will tell you for whom it is a big feast am I right yeah for us, it may be, you know, one thing we did. <laughs> we 
we act. And that act is to do all the acts of the saint. But we also raise up the voice when we see injustice happen. Because that is how live into a mind by the Prince of Peace.